Thank you, Stephanie. All right, I have to just comment as a parent. I have three boys. My oldest is a 21-year-old with autism. And on your uh, visual notes, I am somewhere between the mom with the umbilical cord and the chainsaw, the one with the baggage, and I really want to be the one on the massage table. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get to that point. I'm getting closer. A year ago, I never would have dreamt that I would let my autistic son go on the bus by himself to work, which he does now. And I don't even follow him on his GPS every day anymore like I did a bit originally. <laughs> So I used to be the crazy mom with the iPhone following his little dot like all over the place. And so now even that has passed, so I think I'm getting closer to the massage table. <laughs> uh, um, I had the opportunity last year to work with Autism Speaks in developing an online employment toolkit, which you can find on their website. And the section that I was involved in was how to develop a resume. <laughs> And at first, when they asked me to do this, I thought, oh, you know, this for, and in my family with my special needs son was kind of a weird journey because it never dawned on me until he graduated from high school that he was going to need a resume. So I started using an online tool that our school had. If you're a parent here and your child's still in uh, the school system, a lot of them have this online tool called Naviance that builds a resume for you and helps you remember all these things that really are on a resume when you've never had your first job. So I started with the help of a guidance counselor and you have to look at your child like, all right, they've never had a job, we need a resume. So you start, like you'll see, there's copies of this um, resume section of the employment toolkit in the back for you. And when you look at somebody's resume, obviously it's the basics, name, address, um, your education information. Make sure you list, too, a lot of kids now do online classes. Make sure you include any kind of online education that they've had. Um, and I started listing extracurricular activities, um, athletics, clubs, volunteering in the community, involvement at church, um, all of these things that sort of built a, a, a little look at um, what Scott's skill set was. And that actually has helped guide us into the type of job that he likes having, like Herm had mentioned. You know, just getting somebody a job because there's a sign in the window probably isn't going to work out. But when you really look at what they enjoy doing, that sort of can lead you to putting together a resume that will help them get their first job. So when you're looking at your child, you know, don't leave out anything that you consider just a hobby or a sideline because there's probably a job out there that addresses something that they like to do. Um, in my little packet, I tell a story about how I started using the Naviance and building a resume. Um, there's a sample of a resume on the front that you can look at. It's very basic. And I also included a page in there that's just kind of a blank that before you really want to start putting it online, you can sit down with your child and fill out the basics information, you know, information, let them write it, get, get so that the resume really has a feel of who they are. You don't want it to be completely sterile and sound like it's coming from a 50 year old, like if I was writing it, I wanted it to sound like Scott, so that when he went to apply for a job, it was something that really represented him and not really represented it the way I look at him. So I think that that was something really important that we made the decision to approach it in that way. Um, and now the world of resumes is a lot on, mostly online. So you have to be meticulous with your details. Don't send out something that has spelling errors, grammatical errors. You know, don't put anything on there that's not true. It's really easy to check up on what you've been doing nowadays because of the internet. So be brutally honest about what your child has done in school and whether they've had jobs or not. Um, just put on there what's true. And that will, you know, and it also, when they actually get to the point of going for an interview, they're going to be completely comfortable discussing what's on there. Um, the other part, as you know, of applying for a job, which now even this is a little different, is including a cover letter. Because now with the way they do online resumes, a lot of times it's looked at on a job site or you submit an online job application with a company. I'm going to use Publix as an example. They have all these little kiosks in the store where you can go apply online. And then if you have an actual resume, you can either link it to the job application. Some people go with a paper resume and will hand it to a manager so that they get a little face time with an individual at the workplace, which I think is always a good idea. Um, including a cover letter or a letter of recommendation from a coach, a teacher, a mentor, 
someone at your place of worship is always a good, if nothing else, a good character reference for those soft skills that Herm talked about, which would let an employer know that there's someone in the community who trusts this person and has a positive opinion about them. So sometimes, especially when you're sending in somebody with special needs, that this can alleviate sometimes a little bit of the fears about the employer of, well, we don't know really anything about this person, and how are they going to be in front of customers, and you know, do they have issues? And it also gives them an opportunity to maybe call this reference and get their you know, positive feedback about somebody. You know, and I think it always helps, too, if it doesn't come from your mother. It should be somebody else that your child has a long-term relationship with who thinks positively about them, looks at them like their abilities are their number one thing, not their disability, and so you know if they got a phone call from a potential employer that it would be a positive, glowing report about your child and not somebody who's going to hem and haw about wanting to say something positive. So pick and choose who you would have that person, have that person be. Um, and there's a lot of people willing to do it. You know, when you start asking people who have dealt with your child for years, most of them are more than willing to do it. And in this packet, there's also a little sample in, of a cover letter and what kind of information you would want to include in a cover letter. Um, so this is, you know, there's also information in there about websites that help you with job skills, websites that help you with resumes. Um, but I guess what it, the other thing I want to talk about is the really hard part about these guys and gals going out to apply is you have to be able to talk about yourself. And for a lot of people, talking about yourself makes us uncomfortable. It's a difficult skill to get comfortable with. And talking about something you feel you're good at sometimes is even more difficult to talk about. So one thing that Autism After 21 has done, um, which is a group I formed actually when my son was about, you now actually we've been in existence about two years, but when he was about 18 it started percolating in my head because I started realizing he was going to age out of school district programming soon. And then I was wondering, you know, what, what was he going to do? <laughs> and I wasn't happy with what I saw in our community. I live right here in Boca Raton. Um, so learning to be comfortable talking about yourself is a skill that we started at home. I, he has two siblings, so I would get him to just talk about his day with his brothers. You know, what did you do? What made you happy today? Did you learn something new? You know, did you have a meaningful conversation with anyone? Did you meet somebody that you, were in, that you found interesting and that you liked? Do you feel like you have a new friend? And so this sort of became dinner table conversation for us. And actually, my other two children got a lot out of it because as typical kids, they respond to everything with everything was fine. How was your day good? Why did you do nothing? You know, so I did not want this to be the model for Scott. <laughs> so we started trying to expand on this kind of around the dinner table or when we're sitting there watching whatever game is on that evening. And it, it had helped Scott really get more comfortable realizing that it's OK to talk about yourself. And to talk about things that are positive about yourself, not something that maybe you got embarrassed about during the day, because that always seemed to be the focus about what the oops of the week was, instead of focusing on what the positive was. So we started doing that, and then after Autism After 21 was formed, I started approaching employers. I started with people I knew in town that owned their own business. And I said, look, Scott is part of a group of, of this access program in town of transitioning young adults. Would you be willing to offer your HR person or someone in your business for the smaller companies that you would allow somebody to come in and do practice job interviews to get over these jitters? So it started out as a couple of friends you know, saying, all right, yeah, you know, I'll do it for you. And I would send these young adults over with their resume and get 15 minutes of FaceTime with somebody at a business that they did not know. So they had to be able to sit down, introduce themselves, you know, work on their eye gaze with somebody for 15 minutes while they, the person was looking at their resume. I mean, we've all been at job interviews where you're talking and the person's looking down at your thing going, mm, all right, and then all of a sudden they ask you a question. Um, so those things can be very unnerving, even for uh, those of us not on any kind of spectrum. So this FaceTime, after three, four, five, six, however many of these kids wanted to go on, I found somewhere to let them go do it in all kinds of businesses, from little tiny restaurants to beauty salon to some pretty big corporations in town where they actually had human resource departments. So that was a whole other experience, walking in, going through security, signing in, telling the front desk where, why you were there, you know, where you had to go, finding your way to that office. 
Um, so those kind of things, you know, with practice, everybody got a lot more comfortable going on a job interview. So then when the occasion arose that there was a real opportunity to get a job, they didn't have all of those first time jitters that I think everybody as teenagers and young adults went through trying to get their first job. Um, I encourage on the resume that you list unpaid internships and just put on there that it was an internship or an apprenticeship or a job training opportunity, no matter how small it was, if it was for two weeks somewhere, include it. There's skills learned every day of our lives. So even if your child had a small um, internship somewhere, a volunteer opportunity, be very specific about what their duties were. And somebody might go, oh, you know, we actually do that here as part of our business, even though you looked at it as like they volunteered at Boca Helping Hands, you know, sorting food and packing boxes. Well, you know, to work at a lot of, you know, stores, Macy's, Publix, Target, all of those have stock rooms that they unpack, sort, and store stuff. So any kind of volunteer training you get, make sure you include that as well. Um, and actually the best part about the resume thing was it actually let my family look at my son in a completely different way. Like when I really finished his first resume and I looked at what he did, you know, he had graduated from high school with a special diploma. He stayed at that high school one year after that. And I looked at it and I said, you know, he really has done a lot. And it, it had made, gave me as a parent just a, a positive feeling about him trying to get out into the job world. And he's a super friendly guy. Those of you that are here that know him know how he is, like just always happy, always smiling, and eager to learn. He wants to work, he wants to be independent, and that's really been the driving force of getting me to use the chainsaw to cut the umbilical cord. Um, as he's gotten older, as scary as it is for parents, I've realized that it's something that's important to him, and that you know I'm not gonna be here forever. So if he's willing to do it, and it's not scary to him, then I just have to live with the fear and let him do it. Um, and the part about being different, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you in this room, you know, a decade ago saw the movie Legally Blonde. Well, there was quite a character, and I, there was a scene in the movie where she presents a professor at law school with a resume. And the resume is on pink paper, and it's scented, a florally scent. So his, his initial reaction is to stare at it like, like, what the hell is this? Like, you know, this is a real serious guy. He's a major attorney at a big law firm. He's looking at this pink paper and he's smelling it. She walks away and an associate of his comes up and he goes, you know, have you ever seen anything like this? And he goes, yeah, it's pink. And he goes, and it smells. And he's looking at it. I see that. Well, you know what? I mean, yes, it was a movie, but they didn't forget her and she got the internship. So there's nothing wrong with... Don't be afraid of the differences. Put everything positive in that resume and let them get out there. And I really encourage working on finding the practice interview skills. Thank you.